Hi, Fergal here. In this video, I'm going to give you a typical project maths exam type question. In it, we're given the graph of a function f. We're told that the graph of another function g is a straight line. And we're given the input and output for two different points. So g of minus 1 is minus 6, and g of 3 is 6. We have to draw the graph of g on the diagram. Okay, let's choose a, a color blue, and when g is minus 1, sorry, when x is minus 1, g is minus 6, so we go down to minus 6, and that's here. So, and when x is 3, g of 3 is plus 6, so that's here. And we're told it's a straight line, so I can join these up, and it looks like so. Okay, um, what else are we asked in this question? Use the graphs to find the two values of x, so the two values of two values of x for which g of x is equal to f of x. Now g of x and f of x are the y coordinates, and they are equal. I can use my graph and it's clearly here and here is where they are equal. And from my graph, I will say that the, well, let's do the, the smaller x values, just the x values that we're interested in. So that's when x is 0 and when x is 5. Okay, we're not asked for anything else, just to find the two values of x. So we say x equal to 0 and x equal to 5. And finally, the functions g and f are defined for x is an element of the reals by g of x is mapped onto ax plus b. Now this is just a typical linear equation. We have a coefficient of x and we have a constant as well. f of x on the other hand is a typical quadratic equation. It's mapped onto, in this case, x squared plus px plus q. So the coefficient of x squared is is 1 in this case, and we have px and q. Okay, so a, b, p, and q are all constants. We're told that the graph of f crosses the x-axis at minus 1 and 3, as shown. Let's have a quick look at that. Minus 1 and 3. Sorry, f of x crosses at minus 1 and 3. Yeah, there we go. So what, what, why is that useful information? Well, if the graph of f of x crosses the x-axis at minus 1 and 3, then that means that f of minus 1 is 0. So let's write that in somewhere. Okay, we can say that uh, from here, it's clear that f of minus 1 equal to 0, which means that when we substitute minus 1 in for x, we get 0. So we have an equation which says that minus 1 squared, let's say therefore, minus 1 squared plus p times minus 1 plus q equal to 0. But we also know that f of 3 is 0. So when we substitute 3 in for x, we also get 0 as our output. So what we have now is two simultaneous equations. And if we just tidy up those two equations, we get, from the first one, we get, uh, let's call this equation A, and this equation B. So equation A becomes 1 minus P plus Q equal to 0. And equation B becomes 9 plus 3P plus Q. Let's put a little tail on my cues so they don't look like nines, equal to zero. And because these are two linear equations, I can just add them together to cancel out the cues. Well, I don't want to add them or I'll get two q, so I'll subtract the second equation from the first. So I'll do a little minus there. Actually, what some people do is they change the sign and add. So let's, let's do that. I think a lot of students do that. Change the sign and add. So we... Um, 1 minus 9 is minus 8. 
That's minus 8. Minus p minus 3p is minus 4p. Plus q minus q, they cancel. And 0 minus, actually 0 plus 0 is 0. So bringing the minus 4p to the right, I get minus 8 equal to 4p, which means that p is equal to minus 2. Now we've established the value of p. From that we need to find the value of q. So I simply need to sub that value of p in to one of my equations. I'll substitute it into a. And I get 1 minus minus 2 plus q equal to 0. 1 minus minus 2 is 3 plus q equal to 0. So q is equal to minus 3. So I found P and Q. I can now write out the function f of x as follows. x squared plus Px is going to be minus 2 times x plus Q, which is minus 3. So that's the function f of x. Now we also need to find a and b. Okay. Um, incidentally, the value of q here is the constant in the quadratic function. And that will be the y-intercept. So let's have a quick look at the graph to see does, in fact, yeah. The function f of x certainly crosses the y-axis at minus 3. So the constant in that equation, in that function, is minus 3. Where the graph of g of x crosses the y-axis is also minus 3. So that's the constant in that function. So we already know this constant here, b, which is the y-intercept. While we're at it, let's point at q as well. So the the, uh, the constant at the end of the function is the y-intercept. Because the y-intercept is really when x is 0. Okay, When x is 0, you get where it crosses the y-axis. And when x is 0, if you substitute 0 in for x, all of the terms containing x disappear, and you're just left with the constant. So the y-coordinate is just the, the constant at the end. So we actually know what b is. b in the function g of x is also minus 3. So b is equal to minus 3, because it's the y-intercept. And now we should be able to use that piece of information um, by subbing in a different value of x. And we know what the value of y is. So let's say when x is 3, y is 6. OK. We were told that earlier on. When x is 3, y is 6. So we also get that. OK. Um, g of 3 is equal to a times 3 plus b, which is minus 3. And we know that that y coordinate is 6. So this gives us a, a very straightforward equation involving a, which says 3a minus 3 is equal to 6. So 3a is equal to 6 plus 3, which is 9. And that means that a is equal to 3. So now g of x is equal to ax, which is 3 times x, plus b, which is minus 3. So I have found both functions using the graph and just using my knowledge of y-intercepts and roots. And um, we were asked now to use algebra to find the point of intersection. So by finding the values of a, b, p and q, use algebra to solve g of x equal to f of x. OK, well, I can just make these two functions equal to each other. So the f of x is the y-coordinate of the quadratic function. g of x is the y-coordinate of the linear function. So let's make those two y-coordinates equal. And we get that 
x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 3x minus 3. Uh, the minus 3's cancel. We can add 3 to both sides. Bring the, my, the 3x over to the left-hand side, and we get minus 2x minus 3x equal to 0. So x squared minus 5x equal to 0, which means we can factorize x to x minus 5, which means that either x is 0 or x is equal to 5. And you will find that that is the same answer as we got earlier on, only this time we've used algebra. OK, that's all for this video and um, I hope that this has helped. Thanks very much for watching.